My earliest project for someone other than myself was to modify a couple of very tall bedposts to short knobs. The screws in the bottoms of the two-foot-tall bedposts were the same size as the worm screw for a lathe. I cut the posts off with a saw, screwed them into a block of alder, and then turned them round and stained them, and that project was done. When I was finished with that, instead of throwing that block away, I thought, I can maybe make a small bowl out of this. It was already in the chuck with a dovetail tenon, but first I had to turn it around, mount it on the worm screw in the chuck, and shape the bottom. It wasn't turning true, so I shimmed it until it was. Turning dry wood produces a lot of very fine dust. I can't see it in the air, but it rapidly clogs the filter on my dehumidifier. So I wear a respirator anytime I'm sanding anything or turning dry wood. You can see here the amount of dust that comes off with the wood chips. Shimming didn't make the blank turn completely true, so I trimmed the tenon to match the outside of the bowl before turning it around. This is the cardboard shim I put between the blank and the jaws to make it spin true. I had to put it back in the chuck to turn it off the screw. The treadmill motor controller on this lathe measures speed in miles per hour, not RPM. In the background you see the chart I made to convert miles per hour to RPM. Reaching across the lathe is awkward. But I don't have any choice. The lathe does not have reverse, and it's too heavy to move out from the wall so I can work from the other side every time I need to, and I don't have room to pull it out from the wall and leave it there. I had forgotten how deep I had drilled the 5 16 inch hole to accommodate the bedpost screws. Even with a 60 degree bevel, I have a hard time making the tight corner in the bottom of the little bowl. The banjo locking lever is very stiff. I hadn't yet found the small piece of pipe I put on the handle to give me more leverage. I was beginning to realize I could not go deep enough to completely eliminate that hole. 
if that hole goes all the way through. Nasty catch there. Oh, what now? The radius on my large skew was too big to use it for a scraper in the tight turn at the bottom of the bowl. This is too big. The corners on this scraper are too sharp also. Yeah. I'm going to take this over to the grinder and reshape this. Uh, come back more like this one. Oh, we've got a rounded edge here now. And I can get inside here and scrape this bowl. I can go a quarter inch deeper at least. There wasn't enough wood left to get to the bottom of that hole. I'd have to fill it with glue and sawdust later. I decided to taper the rim of the bowl inward and call it finished. That's kind of cute. Time now for sanding. Respirator. I make patching paste with wood glue and fine dust.
I'm not making a statement here. My social finger is nearly an inch longer than my index finger. I tamp the sawdust and glue into the hole with a screwdriver. I added more wood dust to fill torn end grain in the bottom. Okay, there's that. We'll let that sit tonight. Let's see if we can do with that in the morning. There are still marks in there, but I think I'm going to call that good. Just going to put a little wax on this. Johnson's wax, floor wax. An old sock makes a pretty good buffer. Not a perfect little bowl. A couple of tool marks on the outside here. A um, little bit of tear out, a little bit of, uh, of course, sanding scratches. And I've got to take this down. I can do that entirely on the, on the, uh, the planer, but I'd rather take it down here first.
it is flat, you can sand it and brand it. Need a little more practice to get those even. Spot there's the uh, glue and sawdust we put in yesterday. Tool marks right there and tear out in the bottom and that uh, light colored glue. But I was just playing around with this. I wasn't trying to make it nice. I should have tried to make it nice. That wasn't the first time I wish I'd spent more time taking more care in what was going to be a simple practice project. You never know how it's going to turn out. This is one of the last videos I'll make Featuring this old lathe, I'm eager to show you my new one. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this.